The Federation, and by extension the humans, had won the war. Many players had changed hands. Some systems taken as spores of war. Others been liberated after many long years of occupation. The terms of the treaty were harsh. But why would they be anything else? The Federation were the victors, able to set the terms. Many of the member states made impressive gains. Except the humans. Their demands were... strange. No one would question their bravery, their courage, and perhaps most of all their insidious guile, but their demands seemed almost timid. That last quality was, of course, what everyone assumed was at play when they asked for a small land grant some formerly hostile worlds where their troops had taken part in battles. They wouldn't need to expend energy rebuilding a world's infrastructure and economy when they could just set down military fortifications and become the de facto occupation without the binding legalese. There was some bickering when they also demanded the same allowance on what was claimed by other federal powers where their troops had fought, but ultimately it was accepted. After all, having a human fortress on their worlds would only bolster their ability to keep the newly conquered populations in line. The only problem was that no fortresses were rebuilt. Most enemy worlds under human occupation simply avoided their enigmatic overlords and lived as they always had, while the humans laboured away on whatever work they had begun. Some resisted the humans, seemingly just out of the need to show resistance because they hadn't given them a reason to, but the humans did not crush them as the other powers would. There were no railgun darts from orbital platforms, no retaliatory strikes. The humans simply informed the world that they were not under occupation and that their local government was in control, except for the small piece of land where the humans worked. That was Terran soil. So, life went on. Eventually the humans completed their work and all but a handful of troops departed back to their own systems. Eventually, some locals worked up the courage to try and see what the humans had been building all this time. It was... underwhelming. Instead of a grand fortress, there was a simple barracks building and a guardhouse at a gate in a fenced off area that stretched almost the entire region the humans had claimed. There was a pair of soldiers at the gate, but they were not the hulking brutes in powered armour that had fought in the war. They were in dress uniforms, standing out in the open. Still armed with rifles, of course, but even they were different. They looked ancient, with wooden stocks. Behind them, a row leading into the grounds was lined with poles, each bearing a different and often colourful flag. Beyond that, there were only stones. Thousands of simple white stones, each equally spaced, their rows perfectly symmetrical, so that each seemed to simply blend into the next.